All right. Um, so welcome to Yin Vinyasa Yoga, 7 a.m. on a Monday morning. And I'm excited for you guys to be here. We are filming from Zoom and, you, and uh, Facebook Live, but this will be on Copper Minds YouTube and Facebook pages later if you want to practice again, which you definitely can. Um, the way that this class is taught is that it's something you can do not just today, but at another time also and several times after that. So this could be your practice for the next month. It could be your practice for just the next week. It's up to you. So in our flow today, we're going to do half of a vinyasa flow, half of slower yin, and uh, our focus is going to be on twisting, going left and right, moving our torso in rotation. Um, so if you have blocks or a strap, go ahead and get that. That might be nice. Instead of a strap, you, you can get a belt. Um, and my name is Lindsay Kierkoff. Thank you for joining me and let's start practicing. So how we'll begin today is just in good old child's pose. So your knees wide to the edges of the mat and your big toes to touch and your arms extend out long. And place your forehead center down to the ground. Nice guys. So start off in child's pose. I'm not in the pose yet because I'm just going to try to um, just hit the mute button on Zoom. <laughs> but you guys in child's pose, just start to relax your body. Relax your forehead, especially into the ground, your elbows into the ground. And you'll be here for just a couple of more breaths. And for these last three breaths, can you let the weight of your body fall closer towards the floor? Nice, guys. And then from your child's pose, you're gonna lift your head up and look forward and walk your arms over to the right side of your mat. So you're in like a side stretching child. Place your forehead back down. Your hands might even be off your yoga mat. And as you're here, press the left side of your body towards the left. So you get an extra little stretch through kind of your left armpit area. Maybe it's more in your ribs, your side waist. And then lift your head up, inhale, walk your hands to the left. Child's pose, left side stretch. And your hands might be off the mat. Place your forehead to the floor. And take a couple of deep breaths and press the right side of your body out to the right. Nice, and then come back to center. Just child's pose in the middle, a couple of more breaths. Everyone take a deep breath in, fill your lungs up a lot. And then a deep breath out all the way. Good, inhale up to tabletop pose on your hands and on your knees. And a couple of cat and cows to wake up your spine a bit. So on your inhale, cow, lift your tail, lift your chest, and lift your chin. 
Exhale, round your back, puff up your back, push the floor away, chin to chest. Inhale, lift your tail, lift your chin. Exhale, round, push the floor away, and chin to chest. It really helps you get length of the back of your neck, too. Two more. Inhale, go up with your hips and your chin. Exhale, around. Inhale, the cow. Exhale, the cat. Good. Hold and cat for two breaths. So stay here in this rounded position. Maybe you feel a stretch between your shoulder blades. If you don't, lean forward just a little bit more and you might find it. Inhale to a neutral spine. Good. Downward facing dog. Exhale. Go all the way back. So I did mention this at the start of the class, but today's class is a 45-minute flow. Um, for those of you who usually do this class with me, that might feel like a significant cut because we usually do 75 minutes. But for these online classes with Coppermind, we're going to stick to a 45 class limit for today. So good news, I did another one of these last week. So if 45 minutes is too short, go ahead and do two. <laughs> good, down dog, just move your feet around, pedal out, lengthen your body. Stretch your legs, open your body, get nice and long or just a little bit longer in your muscles than maybe five minutes ago. Nice, now bring your feet close to touch and lift your right leg up towards the ceiling. Stretch long through your right heel and press your left heel down towards the floor a little bit more. Take a nice long inhale breath here. Hold, hold, hold and look forward. Exhale, step your foot between your hands. And lower your back knee to the floor for a moment. Lift your arms up and overhead. Nice. And then turn to the right. So right hand goes back. Left hand goes forward. And look over your back arm. Inhale, stretch across both arms. Nice. And then bring your right hand back behind you. Maybe towards your lower back or to your back thigh, and then lift and lengthen and go back and stretch. Breathe for three. Look towards the back of your mat, two. Good, hands to the ground. Ooh, that'll wake you up. Straighten your back leg. Lift your left arm, or sorry, your right arm to the sky. Twist to the right. Look it up to your top hand. Good, and as you do this, hug your hips towards each other. Hug your right thigh towards your chest. Nice. Take one breath in. Hands to the ground. Downward facing dog pose. Exhale, step back. Good. Feet come close to touch. Lift your left leg up to the sky. Hold and breathe here. Press your right heel down towards the mat and then use that to inhale your left leg high, high, high. Look to your hand, step your foot between your hands. Lower your back knee. Sweep your arms up and overhead. Nice. And then twist to the left. So your left arm is going to reach back behind you. Right arm forward. Your left knee is going to want to fall out to the side. Hug it in. Inhale, stretch out. Exhale, back hand goes back. Right arm goes up. You can stay vertical here. This is good. And then if you want more, go back. Nice. Stay turning to the side. Breathe for three. Nice. Maybe lift your chin a little bit, two. Hands to the ground. Nice job, guys. Step, or hands down, straighten your back leg, left arm up to the sky. My brain is still waking up, obviously. Good look up to your top hand. Rotate up with your eyes, hug your hips to each other, and take a nice deep awakening breath in, hands to the ground, downward facing dog pose. Inhale, come to plank, shoulders over your wrists. Yes, yeah, stay here, awaken your body just as you are with this. 
Zip your legs up to be straight. Press the floor away from you. Lower your knees to the mat. Keep your butt up in the air. Lower your chest between your hands and your chin to the ground so you're in this little back bend. Snig your legs back, your chest forward. Take an inhale, baby cobra. Or if you want, use your hands and go a little higher towards a cobra. Regardless, bring your shoulders back towards your spine. Take an inhale breath. Downward facing dog. Exhale breath. Good. Let's do one more of those to get your spine waking up. Take an inhale, plank pose. Exhale, knees, chest, and chin to the ground. Hips stay high. Snake into cobra, low to the floor or higher up for three. Lift your chin slightly. Downward facing dog. Exhale, go back. Good, just a couple more lunges. Inhale your right leg up to the sky, nice and big. Step your foot between your hands, lower your back knee. Sweep your arms up and overhead, inhale. Turn to the right, twist, open arm twist. Hug your right knee to center, right arm goes back, left arm out in front of you and take up a little bit more space, get bigger, inhale. And then reverse this back, back hand to your back thigh the back of the thigh, and then top arm up and overhead, stay twisted, turn your left hip more forward. Inhale, lengthen, the hands to the ground, exhale. Straighten your back leg, right arm comes up to the sky, breathe in, hug your right thigh towards your chest, zip up your back leg, straight and strong. One more breath as you lengthen, Hands to the ground, downward facing dog pose. Exhale. Left leg to the sky, breathe in. Good, hold here, one more breath. Stretch out from heel to heel. And then step your foot between your hands, lower your back knee down. Sweep your arms up overhead. And then we're gonna go to our twist. Left arm goes back, right arm forward. Getting a little out of breath over here. <laughs> Move your hips forward. Twist and look back a lot, and then reverse this. Right arm is the one to go up. Keep your chest towards the side wall, three. Hug your hips to each other, and then hands down to the ground. Downward facing dog pose, guys. Exhale it out. Good, take a couple of breaths here. Nice, one more inhale where you are. Exhale it out. Good. Step your right foot to your hands. Pause there with your, hand, your hands framing your front foot. Ground your back heel so in your warrior two legs, but your hands are still to the floor. Good, your front heel aligns to your back heel. Bring your right forearm to your right thigh and then sweep up and open for extended side angle. Top arm is gonna reach forward out in front of you. Right forearm to your right thigh. Extended side angle. Nice. Make sure your back foot is secure to the floor. Left arm reaches over your head. Take one more breath as you lengthen here. Nice, feel your back foot rooted into the ground. Press, press, press. Good, and then both hands back down to the ground. Let that go. Turn to the left long side edge of your mat, wide-legged forward fold. Prasarta Pado Tanasana. Good. When you're here, halfway lift, press your chest forward out in front of you, whether it's towards your couch or your kitchen, and then forward fold, head down and hands down. And stay in this fold for about four more breaths. I've got to go grab my watch really quick, but hold there. Nice, guys. And just take one more breath as you are. And then halfway lift, lengthen out your back. 
I'm going to do some twists here. So right hand goes underneath your face, like your nose could hit your hand. And then left arm up to the sky. As you do this, you might feel it in your groin on one side of your body, your inner thigh area. Good. Take one more breath with your left arm up to the sky, nice and high. And then switch to the other side, left hand down. Right arm comes up to the ceiling. Good. Rotate it nice and long where, where you are. And notice if you're falling into your bottom shoulder, press the floor up and away from you. Both hands down to the ground. Nice. We're gonna go to the back of your mat now. So walk your hands towards the back of your mat into a low lunge where all 10 toes are pointing forward or pointing, I guess, backward now. Ground your back heel. We're gonna do exactly what we did before. So you're more your two feet, bring your left forearm to your left thigh. Good. Right arm comes up to the ceiling, so you open towards the right. Ground your back heel to the floor, warrior two feet. Nice, good. Right arms up, extended side angle. Reach your right hand forward out in front of you. Lengthen a lot for four. Nice guys, breathe for three. Rotate up towards the ceiling for two. Good, hands down to the ground, frame your front foot again. Turn to the side of your mat, come into a wide-legged forward fold once again. Good. Inhale, halfway lift. Right hand to the ground, left arm up to the sky. Kind of the same thing, but a little bit differently now. You can either stay here or bring your left hand to thread the needle. It's gonna go under your right arm and then reaching over to your outer leg. I'll demonstrate that again if you didn't get to see. Left arm was up and then it's gonna thread the needle to go under your arm, catch your outer right leg and rotate. You're gonna use your left hand into your right thigh to pull you under and twist. You can even straighten your right arm more forward and have tented hands with your right fingers. Good. Use your right hand under your face to press back up, left arm to the sky one more time. Both hands down to the ground. Left hand is gonna root, right arm comes up to the ceiling, inhale. Good, stay there or do this kind of funky twist. Thread the needle, right arm comes underneath your left arm. Reach over towards your outer left shin and reach your left hand more forward out in front of you. Pull your right hand into your outer shin, twist and rotate and lengthen for three. Breathe here for two. Left hands underneath your face. Press up how you came in. Right arm comes to the sky. Both hands down to the ground. Nice job, guys. Turn to the front of your mat. Low lunge. Downward facing dog. Exhale, press it back. Just a little bit more of our vinyasa for the practice. Step your right foot to your hands. Ground your back foot, warrior one pose. Nice. So bend your front knee low, arms come up to the sky. Inhale here. Get as low in your legs as you can. Imagine you had a nice like round apple resting on your right thigh and it wouldn't roll because your thigh is low enough to act like a flat base for it to rest on. Bring your hands to chest center. Step your back foot forward about six to eight inches. Straighten your front leg. Breathe in and lengthen over your front leg. You can drop your hands to the floor. This is a really good time for blocks. Or your hands could reach to your right shin. Pyramid pose. Take an inhale here. Let the weight of your head fall towards your right leg. And now nice deep twist. You're gonna bring your left hand inside of your foot, 
or outside of your foot. Outside of your foot's gonna be a deeper twist. So left hand down, right arm up, twisted triangle pose. Now before you go into a really big twist, press your outer right hip to the back wall. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, now access your fullest version of this twist. If it's okay for you, look up towards your top thumb. If it's too much on your hamstring, bend your right knee a little bit more. Nice, guys. Two steady breaths. Breathe steady. Breathe steady. Hands down to the ground. Whoo! Plank pose. Step all the way back. Take a breath in. Lower your knees, chest, and chin to the floor. Baby cobra or cobra, or if you want, upward facing dog. You'd have to move your hips closer to your hands, lift your thighs, straighten your arms, hold in whatever back bend that you've taken though. Breathe in, downward facing dog, breathe that out. Good, we've got that set on the left side and then we hit the floor. Step your left foot to your hands, Veer Bhadrasana one, so ground your back heel. Back toes are pointed about halfway forward, 45 angle. Inhale, zip up your back leg. Exhale, bend into your front shin, front knee. Now pull your ribs back to lengthen through your side waist. Lift your back ribs to the ceiling. Take a breath in, hands at chest center, nice. And then take your back foot forward about six to eight inches. Straighten your front leg, both legs straight. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale and start to fold over your front leg, pyramid pose. Hands can go to the floor. Again, blocks are really good. And as a matter of fact, a really good prop for a replacement of a block is two cans. <laughs> So if you don't have blocks at home, I recommend cans of soup. And they're very steady and have really good height, just like blocks. Let the weight of your head fall down for two breaths. Good, halfway lift, twisted triangle pose. So your right hand in or outside of your foot. Outside of your foot's gonna be a deeper twist. Lengthen your spine and then bring your left arm up to the sky. Now with your feet, you want equal weight in your front foot and your back foot. So see if you can bring equal weight to the two as you inhale, lengthen your spine. Exhale, look up as much as you can without falling over for three. Breathe for two. Hands down to the ground. Whoo, plank pose, step all the way back. Take an inhale, lower your knees. Exhale, chest and chin to the ground, hips stay up. Baby cobra or cobra pose or upward facing dog where we'll hold in your back bend for four. Breathe and lift your chest to downward facing dog. Exhale that out. Ha. Awesome, you guys. Lower your knees, puppy pose for a couple of breaths. So bring your knees right underneath your hips, feet right behind your knees. So your knees are about hip distance apart. And then crawl your arms forward with your hips high to the sky, forehead to the ground. Nice. Stay here in your puppy for a few breaths. And so this is where we're transitioning to the yin portion of our practice. So we're going to slow down the poses and have longer holds. And this hold in puppy pose is targeting lengthening of your lats, your shoulders, and an opening of your spine.
It's also known as heart melting pose, anahatasana. So literally, you just feel the weight of your kind of chest center, the center, the house of your heart, letting that melt or release towards the floor. About five more breaths. If you want a little bit more and you can, you can look forward and place your chin to the mat. Last breath here. And then start to walk your hands back, lift your head up, tabletop pose. Bring your hands towards the left, bring your right foot outside of your hands. So you're gonna lunge with your right foot to the right edge of your mat. We're gonna go to dragon's lunge. So first bring your right foot literally to the edge of your yoga mat, the right edge. Turn your right toes out to two o'clock. Your toes might be off your yoga mat now. And then roll to the outer edge of your right foot. So I'm gonna show you on my other side first. So toes at the edge of the mat, turn out to about two o'clock and then roll to the outer edge of your right foot. You're gonna hold here. What we're going for is an outer right hip stretch. You might even feel an inner right hip too. There's several different ways to do this pose. You can hold here on your hands with your arms straight. You can move your hands a little bit forward and give some give to your elbows. You can even place your elbows or your forearms onto a block or some prop that brings the floor to you, maybe even a stack of books. Or you can lower your forearms all the way to the ground. But regardless, your right leg is all the way at the right side of your mat, falling out to the right, dragon's lunge, back knee to the floor, back knee down. And as you're here, just drum your fingers out a little bit, just so you check that you're not gripping too hard or unconsciously. Let your hands rest and your toes rest. For the last six-ish breaths of this pose, if you wanna go into a quad stretch, you can do that. Whether you're on your hands or your forearms, you can bring your left, or sorry, your right hand back right hand back to reach for your foot and stretch out your quad. Two more breaths, just holding where you are, not needing to change or do more, or do less. Just taking in right where you are right now. Nice job guys. Come up onto your hands, bring your right foot to the center of your mat. And then we're gonna to go to the half split. So walk your right foot more out in front of you. Straighten out your right leg as best as you can. Press your hips behind you and your chest out in front of you. And really good time to get your block or your soup cans or something so that you don't have to reach too far to the floor. You can lift the floor to you. So in half splits, think of lengthening your spine. You can also hinge at your hips and lower down if that feels good. Everyone's body is different.
And these poses, since we're holding them for a bit longer, I want you to find a depth that feels challenging, yet at the same time uh, relieving. <laughs> And the depth will challenge you. It'll lengthen your muscles, your connective tissues. But it's a depth where you can still breathe, a depth where you feel like, ha, ah, that feels nice. So if you're not there, you can always bend your front knee. You can back off of that stretch just a little bit more. Good, about four more breaths, guys. Bringing some healing love to the back of your right leg, your hamstrings. One more long breath in. And a long breath out. Good. Now that's a lot of stretching on that right leg, so take your time to come back to your tabletop. No rush, no rush. Nice. And just for a moment, curl your toes under, downward facing dog. And then you're gonna lift your right leg up to the sky, bend your knee, turn your hips open and stretch that out for three. Spread your toes for two. Drop your right leg down, exhale, good. Drop your knees to the floor, tabletop pose. Bring your left foot to the outside of your left hand. Dragon's lunge, other side. So your left foot will be on the edge of your yoga mat. Turn your left toes out to about 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock. And then roll to the outer edge of your left foot. Yeah, and you should be able to see the bottom of your left foot. Without any judgment, the nail salons are closed for pedicures. You'll have to do your own. <laughs> Good. Hold here. And again, there are different heights. You can stay here just as you are. You can walk your hands a little forward, bend your elbows. That'll get you slightly deeper down. Forearms to blocks, forearms to the floor. But one thing I do want you to do is to move your hips forward and down. So if you feel like you're back here with your hips going backward, I want you to move your hips forward so you're this nice low lunge with your hips. Check if you're death gripping your yoga mat in any way. Ungrip your fingertips. So we're targeting your outer left hip and also your inner left hip, so the area of your groin. And the front thigh and hip flexors of your right leg. And you might feel it in one of those areas or another area more than the other, or more than one. Like for me, the front of my right thigh is kind of screaming, <laughs> but in a way that's challenging and restoring. This is a very tight area for me, and I know that. But regardless of the sensation of what you feel, where you feel it, or how you feel it, can you keep a steady breath? If you want to take that quad stretch on this side, go ahead and do that. Left hand will reach back. Embracing the stillness, embracing the quieter time of your practice. Good. Hands. Down to the ground, walk them underneath your shoulders, and then bring your left foot to the center of your mat. Half splits. 
You're gonna start to walk your left foot a little bit forward first and then straighten out through your left leg as you press your hips behind you. Inhale, your chest goes forward and your hips go backward. You can stay here or you can even start to hinge your elbows, lower your chest down, although that's pretty deep. And remember, this is a great pose for a block as well, or your soup cans. Draw your left toes back towards your left shin and you'll get more into your, whoo, your calf muscle. Maybe even down in your Achilles. I feel that in my calf for sure. Notice if your breath is getting stuck. Right now, you're here and you're holding with a steady breath. Allow your inhale to flow to your exhale and your exhale to flow to your inhale. Without any obstacles, just nice and steady and even. One more breath as you are. Nice guys. Take your time. Tabletop pose. No rush to come out of this. And I mean that. Nice and slow. No prize for getting there first. Walk your hands forward. When you're ready, curl your toes. Downward facing dog pose. Lift your right leg high up, or left leg high up to the sky. Good. Bend your top knee, open your hips, and rotate, turn your hips to the side, breathe for three. Stretch in this three-legged twisted downward dog. Good. Straighten your leg, downward facing dog, nice. Now drop your knees, swing your legs around out in front of you, and we're gonna come into one of our last poses. I'm gonna turn and face you. You can stay facing the front of your mat. Double pigeon pose. So you're gonna bring your right shin parallel to the front of your yoga mat. Bring your top leg, so your right leg now. Sorry, your right shin is down, your left shin is up, excuse me. Right shin down, left shin up. And give your left leg a little cradle back and forth. And then place your left leg for double pigeon, so your ankle's on top of your knee. Get your hips to be right in the middle or your ankle in front of your knee. And you're gonna take your feet, your hands to the bottom of your feet, if that's accessible. If not, bring your hands right down next to you. And you're gonna take a deep breath in, and when you exhale, you're gonna push into the bottoms of your feet really strongly and lean forward. Inhale here, exhale, push into the bottom of your feet and go down and forward. Good. You can keep doing that until you get as low as you can. Maybe about two or three more breaths. But pushing into your feet with that strength takes a little bit of pressure off your hips and gives you some more room to fold down with slightly more ease. Whenever you're ready, you can just bring your hands out next to you or in front of you. Now to get low, like I just did, uh, not every body is made for that. And that's a lot of um, movement for the hips. So stay vertical too. There's a lot of stretching that happens here as well. Our hips get very tight, whether it's naturally, how we're structured with our skeleton, our body, or just from work and life, living, sitting. Good. 
an alternative to this pose is to sit with your legs crossed and lean forward and down. Or to do, you can stay as you are. Just another option is to do a seated half pigeon pose or reclined version. We've got about four more breaths, guys. Give up what you can. Take a nice big exhale when you're ready to soften as much as you can for these last two breaths. Nice. Now inhale, lift your chest up. Extend your legs out in front of you. And we're going to go to reverse tabletop. I'm going to turn to the side to show you to counter that last pose. So bend your knees, feet to the ground, hands face you about six inches back. Press up through your hips, through your arms. Lift your chin and maybe drop your head back if you want, if that's okay. And hold for three. Good. Together, take a deep breath in your nose. Open your mouth and... Good. Lower your hips. Other side. Agni Stambhasana, double pigeon. Left shin is on the bottom, right leg is on top. Hold on to your right leg, your kind of shin, and give it a nice little cradle to prepare your hips for the good stretch. And then place your ankle on top of your knee or in front of your knee. On top is, um, can be really difficult to do, so in front of the knee is a good option instead of on. Again, your other options like we did before are your reclined or seated version of half pigeon too. If your hips are off to the side, get them to the center. Beautiful. Inhale, lengthen. You can place your hands to your feet and exhale to press and go down a little. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, press into your feet a lot to go down a bit. You can keep doing that until you get to your deepest depth, moving with your breath. And eventually, if you had your hands on your feet, your hands can come out in front of you to support you. Drum your fingers out if they're on the ground. Just make sure that they're at ease. There's so much going on in the hips at this moment, a really deep stretch, that if we can bring ease to the other areas of our body, that'll help our hips to soften as well. So once again, taking this time to breathe in and out the stillness and this quiet nature of your practice at the moment. Feel what's on the floor, the sense of rooting and grounding. Three more breaths, give up what you can. Use a nice long exhale to help you get there. And start to lift all the way up to vertical with your chest. Great release, you guys. Take your time. Oh, I feel like I'm stuck. <laughs> Extend your legs out in front of you. I'm going to turn to the side, reverse table. This time we're going to take three breaths with open mouth exhale like you're fogging a window. So press all the way up, fingers face you, bend your knees, take an inhale breath, 
Open your mouth and two more. Inhale, press up. Open your mouth. One more, breathe in. Drop your hips. Lower onto your back. Hug your knees into your chest center. Roll side to side if you like. Okay, just for three breaths, drop both of your knees off to the right, arms out like a T for a reclining twist. Bring your eyes to look over your left arm. Good. Hug your knees into your chest without touching them. Bring them to the other side. Knees to the left, a reclining twist. The knees in your chest center. Now hold on to your shins with your hands. Lift your nose and lift it up to your knees. Make yourself into a teeny little ball here. Hold and squeeze for three. Maybe grip your jaw and your eyes and your fingers, two. And release onto your back for Shavasana. Lengthen the back of your neck so that you feel your forehead in the same parallel line as your chin. Relax your jaw and allow your eyes to settle into their socket. Just a brief moment here for today. At the same time, allow your mind and body to fully immerse into it. For this moment, can you feel like your body is getting heavy to the floor? And the weight of your thoughts releasing to the ground. Great thing about a home practice is that you can kind of do your own thing as you're following along in a class on a video. So if you want, stay here in your Shavasana. Otherwise, if 45 minutes was good for you, start to bend your knees. Roll off to your right side and come on up to a seated positioning position facing the front of your mat. With your eyes closed, inhale, lift your arms up and overhead. Exhale, hands at chest center, like you're bringing all that goodness of your practice with you. And especially at these times, remembering to share that goodness with someone else whether it's through a smile or through what you say or your way of being. Thumbs to forehead center. Acknowledge yourself for being here today. Wonderful job, you guys. Great work today. You can open your eyes. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day on this Monday or whenever you're practicing. Um, stay tuned, Copper Minds. Got a bunch of classes every single day, yoga, workout. I'd love to see you here again for some more yoga. And you can also follow me on uh, my website, yogawithlindsayay.com, and also on Instagram, yogawithlindsay. I'd love to connect. Thank you, guys. Namaste.
Bye, everyone. See you. Bye, Leandra. Bye, Lou. Bye, Anne. Bye, Lindsay.